All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the bullpen. My name is John Mazzello. We do this each and every Monday, one o'clock. Um, so again, welcome everybody. All you guys in the back, you guys could come up. <laughs> come on. So, so yeah, like I said, we do this each and every Monday. Um, we try to break it down in all different aspects of the business. Um, first and foremost, we'll go over the numbers. We'll go over the numbers on an individual basis, agency basis, and um, we'll also give a shout out to all you new writers out there too. So we're gonna break down the numbers on an individual basis. Um, we're gonna do the top 20. So top 20, number 20, Stephanie. Stephanie C, 8,834. And this is week to date for the month of November, which I believe is the second week. Was it the first week, Maria? First week or second week? First. First week, I'm sorry. So Stephanie, 8,834. Alma, Valdez, 9,001. Mindy Tibbs, 9,029. Sean Barnes, 9214, Roger Fuller, 9322, Kayari, Joyner, 9438, Carlos, Carlos R, 9659, Cynthia Sitting, 11,797, 11, Ivan Fedrov, 12,188, is that Caleb? Caleb Amor Amoros, I'm sorry if I butcher your name. 12802, my boy Robert Richmond, 12,982 at number 10. Number nine, Sam M, 13078. My boy Jose in Florida, and nine. Number six, Wayne Carr, 15,331. Number five, Danielle Byrne, 23,185. Number four, Steve G, 25,911. Number three, Matthew B, 29,360. Number two, Reiner, Reiner S, 29,632. And number one, at 37,302, Jonathan Porcina. Good job, guys. Um, issue paid, week November for top agencies. Francis Dougherty, FFL Shoreline, 98.60. Can't pronounce that name. I am so sorry. Um, do I have to do the names and the agencies? Or I could just do the agencies, agencies the right? Agencies. All right. Dynasty, 19.665. FFL Great Lakes, 16.767. 24,333 for FFL Humble Beginnings, FFL Third Coast, 26,460, FFL Avenues, 29,375, FFL Momentum, 33,148, FFL Insure and Trust, 34,75, Pay It Forward, 31,488, FFL Dream Team, 34862. FFL Legacy, 41906. FFL Wisdom, Strength, and Beauty. Good job, Carlos, 50,242. FFL Loyalty, 53,930. FFL The Way, 53,982. FFL Service Before Self. 62732 FFL Hidden Gems 73422 and top 5 coming in at 5 78685 FFL Health and Wealth FFL 320 88784 FFL Apex 159572 FFL Central coming in at number two, Brian Mendenhall, 223, 381. And the number one, 
Agency, Ivan Fedorov, 362, 719, and FFL Universe. Big round of applause, everybody. Good job, guys. And now I just want to congratulate a few of you new, new, new writers, first-time writers. Um, Shannon G, Johnny W, Saeed Q, Brandon G, Eugene M, William S, Mendy B, Lazaro D, Rebecca H, Erin D, Tuana, D, uh, Tuana P, Ashley T, Justin M, Raymond S, Leslie C, Nico B, Aaron B, Aaron S, I apologize, Christine P, Jose T, oh boy. This is bad. N E H E M I A H. I can't even pronounce that. I apologize. Nahima W. Olu Washina A. What happened to John Smith, Mary Smith? <laughs> Andre C. Huraja W. Linda R. Craig B. Kikua K. If I butcher your name, I apologize. Um, big round of applause for you guys. So yeah, once again, we go over different things on the bullpen to make you guys better. Um, one of the things we do break down are the numbers. So as far as last week's numbers, the first numbers are the applications. We call somebody and they agree to meet you. That's an app, okay? Um, that's an appointment, not an app. I'm sorry. So do me last. Um, I'll do me first. John Mazzella, 21 appointments, 16 sits, eight closes, 13 apps, 20 pe 21 people wanted to sit with me. 16 people actually did five people know where to be found when you go to their house. Of those 16 people, ratio at 50%, pretty low this week. Um, but eight closed of the 16. But in that home, I managed to get some husband and wives. And one of those appointments was actually a whole family, husband, wife, and two kids. So that's where the 13 apps come in. 24,766 for the week. Next up, my man Frank. Frank, come on up while I read this out. 10 appointments, five sits. Of those five sits, three people said yes, and three applications, 3976. A um, little light on the week, huh, Frank? Yeah, poor time to run to Carlos' schedule. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the last two weeks I had some family medical things that uh, needed some attention. So, um, not that I, I should have been heavier somewhere else. I should have planned better. So that was my fault. But of the five people that I sat with, um, all three families that I was able to help all came from the Institute of Internet Life Leads. Nice. So, so stop right there. Yeah. Um, there's an explosive amount of internet leads in our system. And a lot of people have been jumping on that. So I was gonna to touch on this earlier, so I'm glad you brought that up. Very successful in the internet leads. What's your approach on the phone? And I guess when you walk in the home, it's game on. It doesn't matter what type of lead it is, but Internet leads, I mean, let's face it, they're getting a lot of calls. You know, we're not the only ones calling, they're not exclusive. So we are in competition with other people. I mean, what's your what's your attack to those leads? Um, so on the uh, Serve the People podcast, probably about two weeks ago, Mark did a, um, a training with Zach Trudowski specifically on these and they went over scripts that's really all i've been using 
Okay. So when I'm calling them, I say, hey, John, this is Frank Dockery. I'm giving you a call from the Atlantic County Benefits Office. I'm calling about the inquiry that you made about life insurance. And then I just shut up. Uh, I don't make any mention of final expense or mortgage protection. No, There's no marketing term. There. It's just life insurance. Right, because we don't know which what they're looking at. Exactly. Okay. We just know they're interested. We just don't know what they're looking right. for. Okay. And I'm not making any comments of the form you filled out online or where they did. I just said, I'm calling about the inquiry you made about life insurance. Okay. I'm not giving them a chance to really okay. think of an excuse or a lie or a way to come back at it. Um, okay. I'm, I'm getting very, people that I'm getting on the phone, I'm resolving the leads. They're on me. They're getting a very clear no. I'm not, in, I submitted it by accident or whatever it is. Or they're like, yes, I need life insurance. I've been putting it off for too long. This is what I'm looking for. When can we get it done? Okay, cool. So there's zero confusion when I'm talking to the people. Then I like the fact that it's very, very clear yes or no. The people that I'm setting, they're showing up and it's all business when I walk in the door. Nice. And when you walk in the door, you pretty much have an idea of what they're looking for? Yeah, when I'm on the phone with them, I'll review the information. So you re- confirm age, uh, address. Uh, so usually there's like height, weight, smoking preference on there. Um, and then I'll ask them, what were you, were, was there anything you're looking for specifically? And a lot of times based on their age, I kind of have an idea where it's gonna go. And I'll, I'll say, were you looking to cover something, God forbid something happened to you and your, your final arrangements are taken care of? Or are you looking to make someone rich? And usually people will laugh and like, right. oh, I need to take care of my final expenses, but, and then they'll say, I want to make sure that my, each of my grandkids gets 10 grand. They'll, they'll, they usually have something in mind what they're looking for. Gotcha. So, and then once you go in there, you know, and what they're looking for, whether it's final expense or mortgage or life insurance, whatever the case may be, and then just break it down from there and it gets treated like any other, absolutely any other request. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, and those were all internet leads. Correct. Okay, cool. That's all I'm calling today. Um, nice. This morning when I logged on, I think there were close to 800 in the state of New Jersey. Um, I bought 80 of them okay. in the Tri County by me, um, and there's still plenty in there. I know Ocean County by you. I think there was over yeah. 100. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Cool. Thank you, sir. All right. My man Carlos, come on up, man. Talk about somebody moving up in the company. Good job, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Shape. So Carlos, front and center, 13 people said yes to him, 13 appointments. Of those 13, eight people actually sat with him. Um, the other five just dust in the wind. <laughs> five people closed, one extra appointment, uh, one extra application, 58.94. Um, what do you got for me? Uh, Anything you think of? Yeah. First of all, what are you working on? You working mortgage, final expense? Mortgage protection. Mortgage okay. protection. Um, I don't know, but I had two weeks in a row that for some reason I just couldn't get enough people on the phone. I was calling. <coughs> um, people ask me, like, what's the best time to make appointments? I say anytime. Because you call in the morning, and if you can get people in the morning, then call in, you know, in the afternoon. Well, you're also hiring. You're also correct an agency, correct. which has been correct. remarkable correct. over the last month or two. I mean, now I'm seeing your name all over. So you've been spending a lot of time. Yes. I don't want to uh, use it in a, in a bad way, but no, you've no, been no, babysitting a new agent. So yes. that's time consuming too. Plus, you got a baby. Let's not forget that. Tremendously time consuming. Uh, uh, when you get involved, you know, head on, it is, I mean, Frank knows it is. Oh my God! But uh, I'm getting a I'm getting a, a secretary. I, I, I need some. I definitely need some help. Right. So I can run more appointments, uh, etc. But yeah, man, it was a um, slow week. Usually make more than appointments than that. Um, got a people to sit with me, and you know, got a uh, five clothes, and was able to uh, help husband and wife here. That's why they see six and five over here. And then that uh, 5894, which I, I've been telling you, I'm so over the five because yeah. I know <laughs> I know that it is so much more. You know, I've closed 10, 15, right. $15,000 a week, so I know 
But it, it, this business, it's that's how it is. Oh yeah, it's, oh yeah. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> you know, there's only a few of you out there. You know, the Steve G's of the world, the Jonathan's of the world, <laughs> where it's like this. Yes. You know, but for us, it's yes, it's like that. So we do get all the peaks and valleys, but you know, what's today is not tomorrow. So if we have a bad day today, it's you know, my saying, day by day, week by week, month by month, and then before you know it, the year is older, over, and you got like. Correct. Tens and tens of thousands of dollars in your bank account. Yes. Some of us hundreds of thousands, and <laughs> it's uh, it happens. It happens quickly. I'm going to tell you when my bank account started growing, and this is and to me it was a hard thing to let go of. Uh, when I first started, I was, uh, and that's every you know, I think in my head, every agent I was after the money, and that's the wrong thing to be after. I think if you really do the right thing and put the people in the right plans that they need and, you know, and just really help the client, the money will follow. I mean, you're going to get yeah. paid. I mean, hello. Yeah, I was, just, I was just telling you earlier that when we sit down with people, they need our services. Yes. It's just 100%. a matter of, you know, our you know, trying to rip the, the check off their forehead without yeah. insulting them. That's how a lot of these appointments are going to be. And that's how it was for me Saturday morning where I walked into a mortgage insurance appointment and the guy was just like, yes, yeah, all right, yeah, great. It sounds good, good. And and it was like, so it was too good to be true that I was waiting for the, but let me think about it. Or, but it was, it was like a smooth rollover and yes. you're going to get those. And obviously... The more leads you put in front of you and the more leads that you attack, the more people you're going to sit with, even if you're new. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are really new. And, you know, I spoke to a few of you agents over the weekend where, you know, you want to come to me for underwriting um, um, ideas and where you should put clients. I'm just going to tell you guys, you're overthinking, <laughs> you know, just – Go in, sit down with the people. Don't analyze every lead. Don't analyze every appointment. Just go in there because when you start over analyzing, things go wrong. And for a lot of these appointments, they need you. They they need us. Correct. So it's just a matter of how we're going to present it. Don't try to overanalyze. Don't think about it. It's nothing to think about. Just correct. How can I help you? What's up? Why am I here? Am I here for final expense? Am I here for mortgage? Am I here for annuity? What are we doing here? So um, let me help you with something, too, so, uh, John. Uh, also, uh, when you are uh, when you are in the home, and the, you know people are a lot of the clients, a lot of the people are uh, you know out there. They very hesitant because of you know a lot of scams going around, et cetera, et cetera. Don't be afraid to put them at ease. You know, if they got have the the walls up, you know. Remind them that, you know, that you're not a sales guy, that you are an underwriter, that you are there, you know, to look out for the best interest. And uh, I've gotten so many sales like that. I've gotten to a home and the people are like, is this, is this something that we need to do? Uh, you know, because we tie the money, et cetera, et cetera. And then I go like, listen, just relax. Right. I'm not a sales guy. Like, don't you love when yeah. you walk into a house sometimes and it's like you walk into the kitchen and they're like, all right, so how much is going to be? Oh my God. <laughs> Relax. Chill out. No, get a club soda. Get a cream yeah. soda. Yeah. Just chill. Let, let me let me go through my thing. Yeah. I'll be quick to listen. And that's what we got to do. Just to, I, I, I've been, I, I tell him just like this, John. I'm like, just, to, just to put you at ease, I'm not a sales guy. I'm not here to sell you anything. If listen, you want, I can bring the salespeople yeah. in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm just an underwriter. Listen, I'm just here to show you the product that you qualify for. You know, show you the, the benefits of the protection. And then you make a decision. And they'll be like, okay, come on, sit down. Come on, let's go. And it's so much easier like that. But if you try to run a presentation when the when the people have the, uh, the, you know, the walls off, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I do come across that where... We walk into an appointment and we want to think that just because they allowed us into their home, yeah. they're going to be responsive. They're going to be open minded. They're going to be totally relaxed. But probably a majority of these appointments that I don't get, it's because I either can't build that rapport okay. or 
you know, let me think about it. But I, a majority, not a majority, there is a small percentage of people that are just hard to break. That's, yeah. And right. when you're running six, seven, nine appointments in a day, right. I don't have I don't have time to sit here and coddle you and you know try to bring that wall down. I got you. you know I'm not trying to sell you a TV. Is it Vizio or is it RCA? Like no, it's life insurance. You die, she gets paid. What are we doing here? And uh, so I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. And that, uh, like I said, don't be afraid of, you know, I, I learned this from uh, from Jose, uh, Jose Graxirena. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't like to be sold, man. They, they, they like to have a conversation. They like to be relatable. You know, they want to relate to you. So get get on the level, find that find that medium that I'm always talking about. And uh, and just have a, a friendly conversation with them. Don't be in the friend zone now. Just have a, a good conversation with them. Show them the product. Show them what the product can do for them. Show them, you know, the benefits of the product. Man, and it sells itself. Literally sells itself. You don't have to do much convincing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they, they thought about it when they filled out the form. When they went online and it said, protect your family or life insurance or whatever it says, they filled out the information and provided their phone number for a reason. They're not right. looking for a free laptop. They're not looking for a free tablet. Again, they yeah. don't want to be sold. Yeah. Um, well, I need to think about it. Can I get back with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I give you five minutes. I'm going to make a phone call. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. And be like, yeah, there's, wow. there's, there's different ways how you can attack yeah. that. Of course. Um, um, do I have to make a decision today? Yes. That's that's me. I I'm, I'm very bold like that, mm -hmm. and I've got and I've helped so many families like that because they already thought about it. That's the truth. I mean, why do I say that? Because I'm there. So why am I there? They thought about it. Yeah, they you know thought I mean? about it when they filled it out. I think what you really need to think about is: Do you yeah. want to spend one hundred and seventy-eight dollars a month? Do you want to spend Correct. thirty dollars a month? Do you Correct. want to spend whatever the number is? It is, but. You know what is there to think about? Yeah. You know whether you want to spend fifty dollars a month or whether you want to protect your wife Maria. Like, come on, what are we doing here? It's, yeah. it's not a choice of TVs. Um, but good stuff as All always. Right. Yep. Yeah. Urjan M. Five appointments, one sit, one close, one application. Beautiful. Um, Seven sixty four. And we have my man, Stephen P. What's up, Steve, if you're watching? <laughs> um, 27 appointments. Good job, kid. Or should I say son? Good job, son. <laughs> 27 appointments, 12 sits. Great ratio here, 9 out of 12. Yes. I see you starting to get some more healthy people. Good job. Um, nine closes, nine apps. 11928. Steve used to call me. He still does. And when he first came aboard, he would call me like literally every day from a different house. <clears throat> and I mean, I'm doing this a long time. So I pretty much know if somebody has this problem, you're going to go here. If somebody has this problem, Steve would call me every appointment. And it's like some crit. I'm like, dude, where do you get your leads from? Like, is there like a non healthy, bad list in the portal and CRM, like that like two cents a lead. Like where, where are you getting these leads from? So I'm, I'm glad to see him uh, doing really well. Andy Garcia, good job. 34 appointments, 26, 10 closes, 10 apps, um, 10,720. First time rider, Lazaro Diaz, good job. 20 appointments, 20 sets. Five closes, three apps, 21.48. Lazaro, this number right here will be this number and then eventually that number if you keep doing this yes. every week. I promise you, you keep doing this every week, that will turn into that and that will turn into that. I promise you. So keep grinding. Don't get frustrated. Um, Still a lot more money than what most Americans make in a month, just saying. So good job, everybody. Um, 
So there's a few things I wanted to go over today. Um, one of the things that we don't really talk about, or I don't hear often, you know, we hear about phone scripts, we hear about in-home presentations. Um, I think I'm really good at keeping, keeping appointments, keeping applications on the books. And that's one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, obviously it starts with the phone into the home. But when I leave that home, I literally feel like family to 99% of these people. Um, there are appointments where I go on and like, I don't know why, but it seems like eight out of 10 people in the state of New Jersey have dogs. I don't know why everybody's got a dog. <laughs> so I started carrying doggy biscuits with me for my appointment. So when I go on an appointment, I got doggy biscuits that I'm giving the dog. There are appointments that I go on where I'm literally like, you know, petting the dog as I'm right, as I'm either writing the app or going through the app or, so I kind of feel like family. Um, so just the little things that I do and I know some of you do it. I know Vivina does it because she was just doing it two weeks ago. Um, the thank you cards, they do go a long way. If you guys don't know about it, get with your manager. Um, order a bunch of thank you cards that Family First Life provides. Um, I forgot how much they are. They're not expensive. And every time you write a policy, like every time I go home and that policy gets approved, the first thing I do is I take their birthday and I put it into my calendar. So when their birthday comes up, I get a notification. Hey, it's Maria's birthday today. I call them up and I wish them happy birthday. Um, like think about it. Nobody gets phone calls anymore for birthdays. You know, I, I everything is done through Facebook. You know, I'm like, who calls us? Our mother. Our parents may call us. You know, our siblings don't even call us for our birthday. Maybe we're our kids, but friends and external, you know, out of family, nobody calls anybody for birthday. So when you as a client call up your client, when you as, as, as an agent call up a client, hey, Mary, it's John Mazzella. Just want to wish you happy birthday. And sometimes if I have a good relationship with the person, I'll call them up. Like first thing in the morning, they'll answer the phone. Happy birthday. To, like I'll literally sing the last line and they're just like blown away. So are they going to like get another policy from you tomorrow by doing that? No, but when they're playing bingo with their neighbors and life insurance comes up, you're their guy. So definitely look into investing in thank you cards. Every time you write a policy, put their date to birth in your calendar, send out a thank you card with your business card, little signature, it goes a long way. Um, yeah, just building the rapport um, definitely goes a long way. Call them in a couple of weeks after the policy is issued and placed. Call them in like two, three weeks. Hey, just checking in on you, see if you got your policy, want to make sure everything is okay. If there's anything I could do for you, just please keep in touch with me in the future. Um, and just, you know, call them up every every six months or every, you know, every, I, I try to call people every six months, at least once, twice a year, just to say, hey, what's up? How you doing? Um, I, I can't think, and I shouldn't say this, um, I can't think of the last time I got a charge back. And now what's going to happen is I'm going to get three emails from like America or Mutual of Omaha tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. But I can't think of the last time I got a charge back. I mean, I, I thank God, knock on wood, a lot of my business stays on the books. Um, I do get those emails where insufficient funds, and then I call these people up right away. Hey, just want to see what's going on. Hey, we need a little bit more time and just coddle them. Um, customer service is there for you. They do make things easy. So that's um, that's something you may want to look into too. Um, any questions? No? Okay. Um, also what I wanted to do is um, talk a little bit about phone scripts. 
I'm a mortgage guy. I love mortgage protection leads. So I'm going to do mortgage protection leads first. I do get older leads. I do get newer leads. But I know many of you agents probably are, bar are buying more of the older leads, which is good because you should be buying leads that are six months old because that's when COVID first came here. And nobody was doing business because everybody was petrified. Um, everybody was petrified. So a lot of those leads that are in the system, chances are they haven't been called. So you attack them just like any other lead. You know, on the mortgage leads, hey, this is John Mazzella. Um, I'm getting back to you about, I'm getting back to you about this mortgage insurance you had requested through your mortgage company. And then on every lead should be the amount of the loan and the bank name, the mortgage name. Sometimes it'll say confidential, but a majority of those leads have the bank's name on them. Utilize that to your, to your benefit. Use everything on that, on that lead card. It's all public information. You're not doing anything wrong. Hey, um, you had requested some mortgage insurance through your, through your mortgage company and whatever that, whatever that name is, you name it and the mortgage amount. Yes. Um, great. I've been assigned as your case manager. Just want to verify some information real quick. I have your address as I have your date of birth as I have the mortgage amount as yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't see a co-borrower or a spouse. Are you married or happy? And then they'll get a chuckle out of them. They'll get a chuckle out of that. And that kind of like, you know, breaks up that whole, this is somebody trying to sell me something that I have no use for. Um, and then I go right into it. You know, um, I've been assigned as your case manager. My job is very simple. That's just to get this information out to you. So whether that lead is a day old in the system, three, six, nine, 12 months, it's all the same thing. It's all the same name. Just it, even if it's 12 months old, just hey, I'm just getting back to you about this mortgage insurance you had requested with so and so bank and the amount of this. And chances are they're going to say, yes, okay. And then you just go right into the information. As far as final expense leads, same thing, but you have some other different information on it. You may have favorite color, favorite hobby, whatever the case may be. Um, and again, my name is John Mazzella. You had requested some uh, final expense insurance. You mentioned that your favorite color was pink. Just want to verify the information, get right into it. Also on the internet leads, um, you know, again, just like Frank said, there's, you know, a lot of those people are getting a lot of, phone, well, everybody gets a lot of phone calls, but I noticed that on the mortgage leads, they're more receptive than anybody else. Um, on the final expense leads, probably not as much as mortgage, but they do know that they filled it out. And on the internet leads, um, you know, that's where you have a lot of people calling them. You just got to be, just be creative. You have four seconds to get somebody's attention when they pick up the phone. You know, it's like, hey, Mark, this is John Mazzella from Fine Family First Life. How are you? Oh, this is not a recorded system calling me. This is actually a live voice. So this is a good thing because most of the calls that people get are, you know, who's trying to fix your computers, who's trying to sell you Medicare, who's trying to sell you Viagra. Yeah, it's <laughs> everything comes up. So just if you're going after the older leads, just attack it like it's a new lead because that's what it is. It's, it's a new name. Worst case scenario, they hang up on you. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I had somebody, I had a lead that I had called about two weeks ago. And when I called the lead, it was a new mortgage lead. Hey, this is John Mazzella. Hey, Steve, this is John Mazzella. I'll get back to you about this mortgage insurance you requested through so-and-so bank. I forgot what he said, but he slammed me, hung up. I'm like, all right. And usually on the newer leads, like they don't really hang up on me. He hung up on me. I just called him back right before here. And, um, no answer, and I text him, and I said, whatever I said in my text, I have tomorrow at six available, I have Wednesday, anytime after four, as of right now. Tomorrow at six works, he responds back. 
This is after the guy who slammed me two weeks ago. So we say this over and over. When somebody hangs up on you on Monday, they don't feel that way on Tuesday or Wednesday because we all have stuff going on. I know if you try to call me yesterday, I, 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 <laughs> I, I was hanging up on everybody. Because when you have kids and they drive you crazy, like my son decided that he was going to spend, I shouldn't say this because he's right outside, but <laughs> bro, he went PayPal crazy. He spent $1,300 out of my PayPal account, like buying these bits through Twitch. I know nothing about it, but I got a notification from TD Bank and I was, I was, I was throwing tables. Like I was losing it. So if somebody called me and even if it was like, like I'm in the process of buying a house. So if my mortgage girl called me, I was hanging up on her. So again, everybody's different. Every day is different, but you call them on Monday to hang up on you, just write down, hung up, slam the date, and then call back a couple of weeks later. Chances are they'll never even know. Um, Frank, can you come up here for one second? You're actually another one who's been really successful. There's many of you going around, like building agencies and expanding like a wildfire in California and kudos to you. Um, like what's your approach? I want to talk about the recruiting and I also want to talk about in-home because there are a lot of agents out there and a lot of new agents that call me during the week and they don't know final expense, they don't know mortgage, they don't know which way they want to go. And a lot of the questions that they ask me is, what's your approach in home? So, I mean, when you walk into, like, take me from the very beginning, when you pull up to the house, what's your approach? Pull up to the house when I'm walking up, I, I'm smiling, checking the windows to see if they actually are looking out because they see a car pull into the driveway. Um, I always try to pull into the driveway too, for a couple of reasons. One, in my head, I like the fact that I'm blocking them in and they can't leave. <laughs> um, so it gives me a, I feel like an edge before I walk in, but um, I never do that. <laughs> but uh, as soon as I walk in, um, as I'm walking in, I ask them if they want uh, shoes on or off, um, going, leading them to the kitchen or dining room table. And as I'm walking in there, uh, same thing in every single house. So you need some insurance, and if they say yes, like, all right, great, do you have anything already? This is even before That's we sit That's before down. you sit down. This is when we're walking to the table. Um, if they say that they already have some, I ask, are they looking to see if they can enhance it or get more on top of it? If they say that they don't have any, I'll just say, really? And like squint my eyes, like, and then I'll shut up, and they'll usually give me some type of excuse about why they haven't had any um, but I'll ask a tip my follow-up question at that point is do you not have any because of health reasons or are you just procrastinating most of the times it's procrastinating and then I'll ask them are you done procrastinating now and you always get a yes at that point so before we sit down or as soon as within like 10 seconds of sitting down at the table what I'm trying to do is get a yes from them right there that they are purchasing like right I'm not gonna think about it because that's why you're here, and I already told this guy I'm not going to procrastinate, so yeah. I'm not going to procrastinate. Then uh, I give them an opportunity. They can ask me any questions that they want about me professionally, personally, I'm an open book, but I've been in the business since 04. Um, I've seen, I've sat down, and I've helped thousands of families. I don't think there's anything that's going to surprise me. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to take about five minutes or so talking about two of your favorite topics, your finances and your health. Is that okay? And I get permission, and then I start going into the financial inventory. So break down where their income sources are coming from, um, if they have any assets, any cash in the bank, maybe an old IRA, ask the question, do you have anything else that acts like, that would act as life insurance? Uh, and then I go through the health questionnaire. And then once I go through the health questionnaire and the meds, then I have a pretty now good Now what does your health questionnaire consist of? Is that, like my health questionnaire is simple. How's your health? And then of course everybody says I'm healthy. Okay, on the meds, yeah, I'm on Marathon. 
had a heart attack two years ago. All right, let's take a step back. You're not healthy. Your definition of healthy is different. <laughs> right, right. right. An insurance guy. But, but I am the guy. Like, I'm that guy. Like, I'll tell somebody, like, Frank, you're not healthy. Yeah. Like, let's get it straight. And they appreciate that. But I say it, like, for all of you that know me, know that when stuff comes out of my mouth, like, A, you don't know what's going to come out of my mouth next. And I know Leslie's cracking up right now. She's watching. Um, but yeah, you don't know what's going to come out of my mouth, but when it comes out of my mouth, like I'm not, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way. So I get away with it and they laugh it off and they're with me because your definition of your health is, you know, the way your doctor portrays your health is different than what the underwriters think of you. You know, they're looking for a reason to raise your rates. And I, I let them know that. So my question here is, you know, how's your help? And then I went to, like, do you go through all the questions? Do you have AIDS, HIV, congestive heart failure, dementia? Um, on the, the financial inventory worksheet that I use, okay. there's two lines of health conditions. Heart attack, stroke, cancer, diabetes, um, TIA. So okay. the broad strokes for the most part. Right. And then, okay. I'll, then I'll break down any any scripts that they're on. Any medications. Yes. Okay. So if they don't tell you something about their health condition, but then they tell you all the medications, you can usually figure out that right. there is something right. really going on. That's where I start from. I usually start from, you know, how's your health? It's good. You know, in the past, any history of cancer, diabetes, strokes, and, you know, usually it's, usually it's like, ah, oh, you know, if it's no, but everybody's on high blood pressure. Like I noticed like everybody says hypertension. I'm like, ah, don't worry about it. Like we're all on high blood pressure meds. Once you get married and have kids, you're on high blood pressure meds and they laugh. And that's one of my way of just like bringing that wall down just by getting them to be more comfortable. All right, good. So after you go through your scripts, you pretty much have an idea of where you're going. Correct. So I'll know which carriers, um, I'm going to be looking at like who's who's my 1A and my 1B, um, and then I'll show them what the maximum that they would qualify for, mm -hmm. and then I'll work down from there. So I, I've gone in and done my own. I've I've made my own assumptions just walking to the door before, and assumed terribly. Um, so you got to give the, you got to give every single client the opportunity to take as much coverage as they can possibly get. If they can't afford it, then they can always add on to it later, but at least give them the opportunity to back you down. Um, you don't want to go in and offer somebody 5000 and 10000 when they can afford $50,000 worth of coverage for their family. So you're doing everybody a disservice. And conversely, I'll play devil's advocate here because this just happened to me this morning. I was talking about chargebacks about 20 minutes ago. My only chargeback that I could think of in the last, I don't know, six months was a Royal Neighbors chargeback. It was a woman who had COP. She had like so many things wrong with her. And I was able to get her approved with Royal Neighbors. It was a $25,000 policy for $89. And I had noticed like, I don't know, a month or so ago, she canceled the policy. Because I was expecting this much from Royal, and I only got that much. And I'm like, wait a minute. So after going into the the um, the portal to see what's up, I noticed that she had canceled her policy. Long story short, I've been trying to get a hold of her for like a month. She doesn't answer. She doesn't actually. I when I got her on the phone in the beginning, she hung up on me. She's like, oh, I don't need any. And she had she was bipolar too. So I was like, all right, that explains why she did this. So um, I just called her this morning. And I don't know if you heard, that was the woman in Walmart. Um, I'm like, hey, it's John Mazzella. Hey, I got you approved with Royal Neighbors with all your medical conditions. I noticed that you canceled the policy. She's like, yeah, I just can't do $90 a month. I'm like, I'm like, all right, but $25,000 was what you qualified for. Um, I could get you $25, uh, $90 worth of insurance. I said, is you know is that she goes i still want to do something but i just can't do i said okay you plan on being cremated like i already knew she was being cremated i'm like if you got a ten thousand fifteen thousand dollar policy it would be half the amount 
So she's like, all right, but I'm in Walmart right now. I can't really talk about it. And I just let, I just, I black and white. I said, Patty, is this something that you want to do or is it something you don't want to do? And then she had said, yeah, I could do 40, $50 a month. So now I'll just get back with her later and figure out whether we'll do 10, 12 or 15,000 and keep that on the books. So, um, where were we? <laughs> uh, so financial inventory, then you go through the health underwriting, then you start presenting options. Oh, right. But you had said you start high and then come down. And that's what I had did instead of knowing that she's being cremated and give her a $20 policy for five grand. I was like, well, you qualify for that. But that's why. A, a year ago, I was starting um, low. Starting low. Right. And I was giving them the five, the 10, the 15. Right. And I was always getting the five and the 10. And. I remember sending Mark me the text message asking for some advice. Um, and I put a couple other things in there, placing the blame on someone, something other than my, my own needs. <laughs> so, and then I re as soon as I wrote it and I hit send, I was like, I shouldn't have. I was like, that's probably the weakest thing I've said in a really long time. Because you know he's going to come back and attack you. But within two minutes, three minutes, we talked and picked out a couple things that I could be doing differently. Immediate impact. My case size increased by about fifty percent, mm -hmm. pretty much overnight. So yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I've been having like eighteen. I've been having good weeks because I've been getting a lot of big cases, like four hundred, three hundred dollar premiums, and um, you know I, I've probably gotten a bunch. Now a couple fell off the books because of its fine or later came back, but um, yeah, I've been getting a lot of higher premiums, which has really worked out. Um, now, in closing, when you write in the policy, um, do you let them know what they need? I need a check-in account number, I need your driver's license, and do you get any resistance with the banking information? No. Um, I I mean, I think there's been one time in the last two months that I've gotten that far and that name on it. Someone stopped me with the banking information. And he said, I'll pay for it as long as it's a direct deal to me. He's like, I'm not having anyone, but no one goes into my bank account automatically. Frank, you but, do realize nobody does that. You do realize it's 2020, right? You realize nobody does that. You know, I, they, he sold me on the reasons that me selling like Right. That. But um, typically, before I start the application, I'll say, I just need your driver's license. And then I'm like, what bank do you do you use? Because before I get, I don't want to get to the point at the end of the application right. where I'm doing banking information right. to find out that they have Direct Express. Right. And then I got to start all over and backpedal and change the plan. It's not what they wanted. And so I always ask that up front. Um, and they say Bank of America. I'm like, all right, just grab a board and check for me too at the same time. And I never really get any resistance whatsoever. And, um, yeah, I only mention that because I know there have been concerns in the past of, um, you know, banking. If like people, if you're a new agent, don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> you know, it's it's like us when we were kids and we were out shopping with our parents, and you know, we'd see like, you know, when you go to Walmart or when you go to Shoprite, there's there's always that aisle where there's like a whole bunch of hot wheels cars on the wall and you want one as a kid and your mom would always say no no but after the fifth time you get it it's say i mean we gotta ask so when you ask for that social it's like what's your name when you ask for that banking information usually when i when i get when i ask for the banking information i first thing i say is what bank do you use and they'll give me the bank number like all right i don't need the routing number because i have it here i just need your checking account number because routing numbers of public information. I literally do have practically everybody, every bank's routing number in New Jersey. Like some of them I even know off the top of my head. Um, but I do get the voided check from everybody at least, and not a, not a lot of people have checks on them, but I do try to get a voided check from everybody because in the future, you know, don't want to mention any names, but company A doesn't need um, this information company does like like America. You don't need a license number. Mutual of Omaha, you do, but I take the license number anyway. Even if I know I'm right in Eagle, 
I'll just take the license number anyway. Just the more information you have, the better off you are, because there may be a time in the future where he calls you and you're right, you, you go in a different direction. So now after everything is done, electronically or paper app, guilty, um, how, how are you in closing? I let them know what to expect in the mail. So if it's AmeriCo, they're gonna be getting two things in the mail. The first will be a small envelope with a copy of the health disclosure, and then about a week later, they'll get a copy of the uh, their full packaging, showing all the details of their plan. And then I typically will ask them for their cell phone, and I'll put my information, I'll save it into their phone. Um, that way, in case they have any questions. Thank you, Joe. Do you ask for water when you're writing the right app? Like, um, I'll need a voided check, your license, and can you give me some water too? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if they offer it, I'll always take it, even if I'm not thirsty, because then what I was always taught was if you, if you accept a drink, they won't kick you out if you still have something left. So uh, I can stay there as long as I want until I'm done my drink. And then once I'm, once I'm done, then they can kick me out if they don't really want the, the services, but no, I make sure they have all my contact information, um, and I think that's pretty much most of the that's that's the closing of the the appointment typically because then I'm usually trying to get out of there so I can get to my next one. Yeah, I mean, I I make sure I specify like, okay, this is not looking to pull the wool over your eye. We're submitting this to underwriting. They're going to make a decision, or maybe the decision has been made. They're going to draft from your account X amount of dollars. And then within the next week or two, you'll get your policy in the mail. But yeah, I, I make sure I plant it in them like at least two, three times before I leave. And then the way I close every house is, you know, um, Frank, again, pleasure meeting you. Anything I can do for you, family, friends, just please keep me in mind. Thanks a lot. Thank so um, I'm actually proud of myself. I went longer than 27 minutes. So um, we're going to wrap it up. Once again, thank you for you for whoever's on. Thank you for... Um, Leslie's on. She said hi. Hi, Les. <laughs> I miss you. Um, once again, for all you guys that are on, we do this each and every Monday. Next week at Wayne Beat Mark, it may be Frank, Carlos, whoever. Um, once again, I'm John Mazzella. Any questions? A lot of you guys have my information. Don't be afraid to call me. Later. Awesome.